Uh, Los Angeles Chargers and the Minnesota Vikings. You might not want to bet this one, but you sure as hell are going to want to watch it. It is one, one and a half in favor of the Vikings. It is a all the way up to 54 at the majority of the books out there. I caught this one on the upswing. We talked about it here on the pod last week. We will continue to beat the drum. This Vikings team is going to be a dead over team until we see otherwise. The Chargers likely a dead over team until we see otherwise. And that's why we're getting a total of 54 when we have so many totals in the 30s and, and very low 40s. Good offenses, terrible defenses, two good quarterbacks with weapons. This should be a shootout, one of the more fun games of the week. Um, Steven, for me, I, I, I mean, look, even at 54, I would only it would only be an over or pass. Right? I know no, no one cares that I got 51. Like, if, even at 54, it would still, I would, I'm not sweating an under in a game with the Vikings and Chargers. It's just not happening. The Chargers offense has been one of the most efficient offenses in the league this year. The Vikings offense has been, as we've seen, certainly from a passing aspect, not from a rushing aspect, from a passing aspect has been lights out. And we know that both of these defenses give up yards and chunk plays and things left and right. This is going to be a hell of a game to watch. That's for sure. I suck at totals, so I respect your opinion. And I'll give you my <laughs> analysis on the spread. <laughs> I started the week thinking that I'd be interested in the Chargers. And to my surprise, after digging in a little bit, I think it would only be Vikings for me at this point. Uh, when, Min when Minnesota has the ball, they've been elite in a yards per play standpoint against two pretty respectable defenses in Philadelphia and Tampa Bay. 6.3 yards per play the first couple of weeks. It's been the turnovers and the fumbles that have killed the Vikings. And at least on the injury report for the offensive line, it looks like Bradbury and Dara Shaw are trending towards playing this week against the Chargers. Meanwhile, the L.A. defense, I know there was that game against Miami, but overall 13.5% pressure rate despite blitzing 38% of the time. That's a good way to get gashed on the back end of your defense. When the Chargers have the ball, not as impressive turnovers aside uh, compared to the Vikings offense. Justin Herbert and company, 5.5 yards per play against the Miami and Tennessee defenses. Five and a half for context was around league average last year. Vikings defense, 4.7 yards per play allowed, and that included a game against the Eagles last week on a short week. So um, at least on the very basic analysis of this, I kind of landed on Minnesota here. I'm not sure I'm going to bet it because I still think both defenses are not very good. But I thought it was really interesting that, um, you know, Brian Flores, 49% Wink Martindale level blitz rate through two weeks, only a 19% pressure rate. But in the middle of that Eagles game, if you guys were watching, you saw what I saw, dropping eight guys in coverage and just saying to hell with it, we can't get pressure. Let's just drop eight guys in coverage and see if the quarterback can find one of his best receivers with two guys on him. So I'm curious if we see a little bit more of that against the Chargers this week. Flores is trying to make things work and change things up. Uh, but I landed on the Vikings here after digging into some numbers. Uh, Adam, when we take a look, I mean, probably people love to just, for whatever reason, try and talk trash about Kirk Cousins and all the, uh, oh, look around. He was the third graded quarterback of the week last week, had an awesome game, looked really, really crisp. And of course, all those weapons that he's got. Uh, Herbert and them, despite the fact that it hasn't really shown up yet, has been a very, very efficient on the offensive side of the ball. Um, yeah. Is it possible for a receiver to have 300 yards in a game? I'm not <laughs> sure we've ever seen that before, but if ever it were going to happen, it, it would be Justin Jefferson this week. Um, the chargers, the Chargers can't cover anybody. Um, and I'm a little bit recency bias burned on this one because it was bombs by Ryan Tannehill to let me see Nick Westbrook Akine. Yeah. Yeah. got one of them, and I yeah. believe it was Chris Moore got yeah. the other one for yeah. the Tennessee Titans, and that is part of how I lost one of the most obvious bets that I've mm -hmm. made uh, in quite a while on the Los Angeles Chargers this year, and so if you want to play props and, and look for overs, great. I think that's a pretty chalky, straight way to do it. I think if you are willing to watch this game and you're in a place where you can live bet, this is the freaking live betting Super Bowl. Uh, you are going to have opportunities the way these teams are going to go back and forth. You are going to have chances to be able to get both teams at plus money throughout this game. You're going to be able to build up a middle that you can probably play off all the way through to the fourth quarter and maybe even take a big spread at the end of the fourth quarter 
and get one team to bring this back within a score because what do you think is going to happen? Both of these teams are going to allow you to score and they're going to be able to keep pushing the ball down the field. The back door will never be shut in a game like this. I think it's going to trade back and forth all game long. I don't know if we're going to get to 54. I'm not about to tell you that we're not, but I do know that I don't want a piece of this pregame. If I were to have played it pregame, I probably would have wanted the opening teaser on Minnesota plus eight and a half. But when we're talking about a game that is cruising toward 54 on the total, those points matter a whole lot less. So I'm not necessarily yeah. as interested in that teaser. But if you're willing to look at this thing live, I think you're going to have opportunities to bet both teams at plus money throughout this game. And you're probably going to get a late opportunity on a spread that might get to more than a touchdown that'll let you be able to get a little aggressive there, too. 59 and a half is the receiving prop for Mike Williams in this game. I know everyone's going to be looking to the number wide receiver ones in this one. Don't look now. Mike Williams got 13 targets last week. He's going to get another 13 this week. And uh, <laughs> I think he's a pretty good shot to get to your 59 and a half for Mike Williams. I do have that in the account this week. Feel pretty good about Mike Williams over in that one. There's going to be a lot of passing in this game, and it is going to be a lot of success in this one as well.